Hi guys, it's Imogen, and welcome to the Season 6 Rengar Jungle Guide. So hopefully after this guide you will understand the basic core fundamentals of Rengar and you will be able to pretty much be inspired to pretty much go play Rengar. So Rengar is a really really good champion actually. Uh, this is one of the champions that I would actually really recommend if you are sort of on the lower end of ELO, so like bronze, silver, even like lower gold as well, you can really like pretty much just stomp on everyone if you do get good at Rengar. A little quick personal story for me, when I was bronze 4 I went up to silver 2 in about 3 weeks ish, a month for just playing Rengar, I, like, I wasn't that good of a Rengar player but because I just got really fed and like once you're really fed with Rengar it doesn't really matter if you're in like lower elos anyway you just one shot people and then you just win games so would highly recommend this champion if you are around the lower elos, uh, obviously when you do play him a bit higher up it does take more skill since you can get one shot and you get focused down and stuff like that but anyway hopefully this guide does help and on with the guide so the general consensus with Rengar is that he's pretty much played as a full AD assassin. From time to time you'll probably see maybe a tank Rengar where he'll have like warrior deadman's play and like some kind of a weird build but I wouldn't really recommend that. Obviously you can do it but it's not really that good. Uh, you've probably seen in the LCS as well if you do watch the LCS. I believe it was Rayanova who actually did uh, full tank Rengar. He went Cinder Hulk and Titanic Hydra and then just straight tank. Uh, whereas in Ori for example he just goes full AD and just one shots everyone. Uh, I believe and many other Rengar players believe as well that full AD is pretty Pretty much the best way to play him, especially for solo queue as well, since he completely thrives off people not being able to communicate, and you can pick off people and just constantly keep getting kills from people being incredibly disorganised. Moving on to Rengar's abilities, you will notice straight away as well that he does not actually use mana. He's a completely resourceless champion, which means that he scales pretty, really, really well, pretty much with CDR. So that means that because he doesn't have to use, you know, worry about mana or anything like that, the more so cooldown reduction he has, the faster he can use his abilities, and then he gets more stacks as well. But anyway, Rengar's passive is Unseen Predator, so this means that when he's in a bush or stealth, this means Rengar basically can leap to his target and his basic attack will dash to them. So this also scales with Rengar's attack speed as well, so if you actually do have more attack speed, you will jump out of the bush faster, so just pretty much remember that this animation scales with the attack speed that Rengar has. Another thing to mention as well that this bonus actually lasts for 0.5 seconds upon exit and brush or stealth so that means you can actually walk out of a bush slightly and still be able to jump to someone although remember as well that you can't actually flash out of a bush that will instantly cancel your passive and you won't be able to actually jump. The second part of his passive is what I mentioned before, that is his ferocity stack, so pretty much using one of Rengar's abilities and actually hitting an enemy with it will generate one ferocity, he can reach a maximum of five, and then upon reaching five, his basic abilities become empowered and he can then use them for different effects. And finally, for Rengar's passive, he also has the Bone Tooth Necklace, so this is pretty much just like a trophy, extra kind of side thing for Rengar, and it powers him up as he gets more kills or assists. So this will occupy your trinket slot, but don't worry, you don't like lose a trinket or anything like that. It pretty much just acts uh, like there's an extra thing there, and you can see the bonuses on screen now. It scales all the way up to 20, uh, 20 kills or assists, that is. They, uh, they're also added together as well, it doesn't have to actually be full 20 kills, it can be kills or assists, but these are just little bonuses, kind of rewarding Rengar for getting kills, and it's like he gets trophies and he empowers himself. Really really nice passive as well, uh, helps you snowball even more and highly recommend to remember what these bonuses do. Rengar's Q ability is Savagery, so this pretty much means that on the next basic attack within 3 seconds Rengar will deal extra physical damage. So this is also an auto attack reset as well, so it's pretty much just an auto attack, it's an empowered auto attack is how you can think of it, and it does really really big damage, so when you're clearing jungle camps what you want to be doing is using a regular auto and then pressing Q for pretty much an instant 2 autos. The empowered ability on this uh, actually is pretty much the same thing but it deals even more damage, so you can see all the stats on screen now, it does a lot of damage and it also gives you some bonus attack speed as well which is also really really useful for clearing the jungle camps. Rengar's W is Battle Roar. This is basically just an AoE damage and ability. It doesn't really do much when you do build AD, which is how I'm going to be going over in this video, but you can build AP. It's like a little funny thing, although I really, wouldn't really recommend it in a ranked game. Just do it in normal games without messing around with friends. But uh, anyway, so this is just an AoE magic damage ability. It will deal a tiny amount of magic damage. It does help, though, obviously for clearing and stuff like that. And it also gives Rengar bonus armor and magic resistance for 4 seconds. This also increases depending on the amount of enemy champions or large monsters you hit. So that means that when you are in the jungle, you will actually gain a little bit of extra resist than you normally would, but it does also help for your clearing as well since you take a little bit of less damage. And the empowered version of the battle raw is pretty much the same thing, minus this also is obviously empowered so it does more, but it also heals Rengar based on his missing health. So that basically just means the lower HP you have, the more it will heal you for. Also remember though as well that the heal doesn't actually scale up with the amount of levels that you put in W, so that's also a reason why people will actually max it last as well, but I'll come on to that when we go on to the ability level in order. 
Rengar's E is Bowler Strike. It's just a linear skill shot that will deal physical damage upon hitting an enemy, and it will also slow them, which decays over 2.5 seconds. So that means once you hit them, the slow will apply, but then as the time goes on, the slow will get less and less, and eventually they'll be back at full speed. The empowered version of this ability means that it will actually do more damage, but it will also root the target for 1.75 seconds. This actually is really, really strong. It's quite surprising how long 1.75 seconds actually is. Generally, if you hit someone like level 3 with a 1.75 second root and two people are actually hitting a laner at level 3, they're usually either dead or really, really close to dying and you push them out of lane. So don't actually underestimate this ability at early levels, because 1.75 seconds is a very long time to actually be snared and being hit by two people in lane. And finally, moving on to Rengar's ultimate ability, this is Thrill of the Hunt. You probably know what this ability already does, but I'll still explain it for the guide anyway. If you've ever played against Rengar, you definitely know what this ability does, since you probably died to it multiple times in the game. But anyway, this is what makes Rengar incredibly fun to play, and I highly recommend him for this. So Rengar will activate his predatory instincts and gain stealth after 1 second of not taking any damage. If you do take damage, this is extended to 3 seconds, so after 3 seconds of taking the damage, you will then enter stealth. Once you're actually in the stealth, you'll gain true sight of all nearby enemy champions in a given radius. You'll see that stat on screen now as well. Uh, so that is for 7 seconds and 12 seconds. The 12 seconds is only when you have actually achieved 20 trophies, so kills or assists added together. And then when you damage an enemy with an ability or basic attack, you'll actually come out of stealth. And while stealthed, Rengar will gain 15% movement speed, 30% if he actually has enough trophies to do so, while moving towards an enemy champion. All the enemies are actually notified when you are actually close with a little exclamation mark above the head. Upon exiting stealth, Rengar will then gain bonus movement speed and generate 5 stacks of ferocity over the next 5 seconds. So every second you will gain a stack of ferocity upon coming out of your ultimate. So there is actually quite a lot in that ability, but if you just want to generalise it, basically Rengar goes into stealth, he can see where everyone is in a given radius, and he gains movement speed. That's pretty much how you can think of that ability. So honestly, this ability is pretty much just a free kill whenever it's up. If you're playing jungle Rengar, you can pretty much dodge every ward and just gank straight through the lane, but I'll come on more to this when we're actually in the ganking section with Rengar. But anyway, that is Rengar's ultimate, and it is incredibly powerful, and what makes him really difficult to balance as well. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this part of the guide, and moving on to the next section. As for the leveling order on Rengar, all you're going to do is take Q at level 1, this is your main damage as well, so on your first camps, either Krugs or Gromp, you'll be dealing the most amount of damage to get it instant level 2. This is also an auto attack reset, so throughout your clear, you'll actually be using this ability quite a lot. At level 2, you're going to want to take W, this is because you pretty much just uh, get extra armor and magic resist as well, so you're going to take less damage from the jungle, and it also gives you a little cushion as well if you are unsafe with Rengar or just learning him, to actually get the little heal as well with the empowered W. And then finally at level 3 you're going to be able to get your boulder strike so this will give you all your abilities I mean you can actually start stacking your ferocity really really quick and your clear speed does actually increase quite dramatically from this point. And then of course you just follow the on screen order you're going to be maxing Q first since this is just your main damage source you do a lot of damage from maxing Q and then E second since that's pretty much your second damage you just go all out damage on Rengar. Uh, your E is the second damage source and then W last since the heal doesn't really scale it's only the bonus magic resistance and the armor as well. It's not really needed that much and that's why you max it last then and obviously your ult whenever you actually can. As for the runes for Rengar, you will see those on screen now. So you might think this page is a little bit weird. Uh, you actually run for the 10% CDR level 1. So what that means is you have one CDR quint, and then the your blues are all CDR as well. The standard armor in your seals, and then your reds and two quints are actually armor penetration as well. So this might seem really weird, and it also does take a little bit of time to get used to when you're actually clearing the jungle, since you don't have any attack speed or any like any bonus AD that you can actually clear the jungle with. But trust me, once you get used to it, this page is really really strong. You deal a shitload of damage, if I may say that. It is really insane the amount of damage you deal, uh, considering the targets that you're going for, like the squishy mid laners or the squishy. AD carry, they don't have really much armor whatsoever unless they have like a Zonyas or it's like an Ezu with Icebound Gauntlet, but say it's like a Vayne with say 37 armor, you have Ghost Blade plus the 17 armor pen as well, so you have near 27 armor pen plus your armor pen from the Masteries as well, you have like 40, 30 armor pen, it's, it's really insane, you deal close to true damage to any squishy champion and you, that's pretty much where the one shot does actually come from. But I will mention as well that you don't actually have to run this page. If you do want, I will show you an alternative page, which is on screen now. That is literally just the regular attack speed page. So all you have is the attack speed quints, the extra AD on your reds, armor seals, pretty much standard, and then you have armor, 
uh, MRP level or just flat MR if you would like on your blues. You can run CD upper level if you do want, it doesn't really matter that much. But uh, as I mentioned before, that page isn't exactly needed or it's really, really nice to have if you can actually afford the IP for it. But you don't really have to have it and you can just run the standard attack speeds and your clears will be way, way easier as well. And you won't really struggle that much as well with it. As for the masteries for Rengar, you'll pretty much notice a common theme, it's just damage, damage and damage. There's pretty much any damage that you can get you want to be picking up. So the double-edged sword is extra damage. The vampirism, you can actually take natural talent if you do want, although vampirism can help if you're still learning Rengar, I would highly recommend that. The extra 2% lifesteal is, it doesn't really sound much, but obviously it does add up since you do auto attack quite a lot, and the amount of damage you do is pretty significant, so the extra lifesteal that you are getting from your auto attacks does actually help a little bit as well, so I will recommend that one. And then obviously down the cunning tree, you're going for the Thunder Lords with the extra burst. Uh, I mentioned a little bit a while ago as well that you can actually take the extra CDR from, I believe it's called Intelligence, you can get the 5% CDR on there. Uh, it doesn't really matter it's only 5%. It reduces your ult cooldown at level 16 from 42 seconds to 39 or is it 38 I believe, something like that. It's not really that much anyway so it's not that important but if you do want that extra CDI you can actually go for that as well. Moving on to the jungle clear with Rengar, there is quite a wide variety of things that people will do on Rengar. Uh, I'm going to pretty much tell you, I guess it's the safer one as well. So what you really want to be doing is pretty much rush for 6, that's really a real big thing you want to do because level 6, that's when you can start snowballing, you can just ult into lanes because you have a lot of CDR as well, so your ult is a really short cooldown, you can ult into lanes, pick up kills, start snowballing, stuff like that. So one thing I really want to mention is you pretty much just full clear. It might be really weird, uh, I want to mention this. Uh, when you do actually have the armor pen page, which I showed you previously, trying to full clear can be a little bit weird, but remember that the Skull Crab is your best friend as Rengar, it's a really, really big thing. You can easily get all loads of lifesteal off it, and if you kind of want to be a little bit cheeky, you don't snare it with your bowler, so that means you can auto attack it more, and then therefore you get more lifesteal from your machete. So that's one thing I want to mention, but you will see the clear that I am actually doing on screen now, and you can just follow that. So you can do the standard uh, full clear if you do want. Uh, but you can also gank at level 3 as well, but if you're not entirely sure what you're doing on Rengar, I will just highly recommend follow the full clear and then try and rush for 6 and then look to do things then. As for ganking on Rengar, this is where you actually do have quite a reasonable amount of options that you can choose from. So obviously it kind of depends on the situation, but I will go through a couple of options that you do have now. So firstly you can just do a pretty much walk into lane kind of gank, so you come from behind the laner, so for example mid lane, you walk around, instead of going around the bush, you go pretty much past their blue if, as it were, if you was on the blue side, uh, you go past their blue and come behind them, smite them, and then throw the bowler when it's guaranteed to hit. Uh, so that's, you know, you snare them and then you just go to ham on them while they're, you, they're pretty much snared. Uh, another one that you can do as well is you actually you come into lane with four stacks instead of five and snare them and what you do is throw the regular bowler at them which that means they're slowed and then you throw the other bowler at them which is the empowered one so it gives you a better chance to hit it but I would highly recommend going in with the five anyway because the snare is just it gives them less time as well but if you go in with four stacks that means you know it's it's going to take longer to actually get them snared and if you do miss anyway then you're kind of fucked but yeah there you go Another option that you do have on Rengar is actually ganking from a bush as well, he's one of the fewer junglers that can actually do this really really effectively. So this is pretty much applies to top and bottom lane, but you can actually do it on mid if you do have enough trophies to actually increase your leap range, but I'll pretty much explain it for top and mid. So what you will do is when the minion wave is pushed up a little bit so that you won't actually be seen walking into the lane from behind, so through the tower, you can actually walk through the tower into the brush and kind of like just inch around into the other bushes where you're not going to be seen and then with five stacks you jump out of the bush when your laner is ready and you're ready and you can actually get the kill and you land the bowler on them as you're jumping out of the bush and then you pretty much land on them from the bush like that so that's more of a complex way and if you do miss the bowler you are again you're pretty fucked but uh, you can actually slow them and like wait to land the bowler etc but that's all stuff you'll pick up anyway just from playing Rengar but that's also another possibility and finally the last way that I can think of is pretty much ganking with your ulti so this is either coming from anywhere I would really hi highly recommend though coming from the lane so if it's mid lane you run straight past the mid tower you'll ult from behind the tower and then go that way that means you pretty much dodge every ward because they're not going to ward behind the tower obviously so they the only cue that they get that you're coming is the exclamation mark above the head. However, if you do ult from like the river or something like that, you might be stood on a ward already and then they see you ult and then they just walk away, it's like you've wasted your ulti. So I would highly recommend to actually ult from the lane since there are going to be no wards there whatsoever and they're not going to know you're coming until it's too late. Moving on to the item build of Rengar, this is pretty much one that is kind of contested quite a lot and loads of different people say that they use the right build or the best build or anything like that, uh, but honestly with Rengar, uh, my philosophy with the champion anyway is it really doesn't matter that much if you're really far ahead on Rengar it doesn't really matter what you build you can build like 
Trinity Force, well, Trinity Force is pretty decent at Rengar anyway, but for example, like, you could go Stinger into uh, Hextech Gunblade, straight into Rabadons, and then get a Ghost Blade, and you'll still one-shot someone if you're, like, three levels ahead of them because you're so fed anyway. Like, it doesn't really matter that much, but obviously, if you are itemizing reasonably well just into your AD items, then you're obviously going to do really well. It doesn't really matter that much until higher reload and all that good stuff anyway. But if you are, like, of a lower bracket, like, you know, silver, bronze, gold, anything like that really, even in, like, platinum and diamond, it doesn't really matter what you buy in Rengar. But I'm just going to show you what I think is really good anyway, and what I've been told is really good, and also what I've actually found using myself uh, pretty much to be really, really good and works really nicely. So as for your starting items on Rengar, what you're going to be wanting is the machete and the refillable potion. Pretty much obvious, you don't really go the talisman because you have no mana, it doesn't really help you whatsoever, and you are going to be auto-attacking quite a lot since you have the auto-attack reset, increase the attack speed, and all that good stuff. So on screen now you are seeing the build for Rengar, as I mentioned before it's kind of contested but this is the one that I found works really really well and this is the one I'm going to show you, so I highly recommend this one as well since I have actually had really good success with it. So just to explain some of the things that you're seeing on screen now, so the core pretty much means that what you want to do is get your warrior, have your lucidity boots, obviously you can pick up the tier 1 boots a little bit earlier on as well if you do want, but pretty much generally what you want to have is your warrior, finish your lucidity boots, have a tier mat, so you pick up tier mat before going into ghost blade since this increases your clears like really really rapidly. Obviously you can actually go for the tier mat before you actually finish your warrior and all this but it doesn't really matter that much so you can just follow this order and then you actually finish your ghost blade. Then that is when you start going into your full build items which is like you go into shiv, into IE, stuff like that. But if it's too complicated for you it doesn't really matter, you don't have to follow that like kind of little segmented section, you can just follow the general core which you are seeing on screen which is the overall build anyway. It doesn't really matter that much as I said but if you do want to be more specific you can follow that. And then also what you are seeing on screen is the super late game option. So this is something that you will actually see on Rengar quite a lot. You'll see Rengar players, when it does reach super late game, you will actually sell your boots and your warrior as well, since, as you know, the warrior is really good early on, and then later on it falls off since the stats aren't as good. All it is is the flat ID and the CDR. doesn't really offer that much. So you might think that the Essence Reaver is kind of questionable because you don't have mana on Rengar. Honestly, it doesn't really matter that you don't have mana. What is important is the crit that it gives you and it also fills in the gap for CDR. Ah, that's a really really big thing and then also you're selling boots for the phantom dancer so the phantom dancer means that you have the you pretty much pick up the movement speed again obviously it's not that much but it still is a decent amount when you are ulting as well you do get a lot of movement speed when you do a phantom dancer and it also gives you the crit so this build total like if you get to the super late game where you pretty much sell your warrior and boots and you have the phantom dancer and the essence reaver as well you have a hundred percent crit a shit ton of ad and you just instantly one shot people you can solo baron and all this real crazy stuff with this build is really really good and that is also why I highly recommend it. It's a 100% crit Hydra build which is really really good because your splash damage is insane, you do like one shot people instantly, you can fight tanks and it's really insane so I highly highly recommend this build. Obviously you're not going to reach the super late game where you're actually selling your items all the time, it's quite rare that you do actually reach this point but when you do you pretty much can't lose if I'm being totally honest. If you know what you're doing on Rengar you don't really lose at this point because the game is a 4v5, you have 45% CDR, uh, 40 or 45 whichever one you decide to go for and the AD carries is dead all the time or the mid laner is always dead or anything like that uh, so it's a 4v5 you don't really lose to be honest unless they're incredibly organized but that's a different topic. And now moving on to a little combo section where I'm just going to give you pretty much the combos of Rengar anyway. Just little small, uh, basically tips just to help you out so you don't have to like constantly be, you know, looking up different combos or figure it out yourself. Just a little, a little shove forward I guess. So the first thing, it's not really a combo per se, but it is being able to actually throw your bowler while you're midair. So this was actually made harder recently. Uh, well, it was, it's not super recently, but you'll know the patch of it anyway, so you can't actually, what you used to be able to do is throw your bowler pretty much instantly, but then they added a cast time. So to actually get around this, if you've ever played Victor, you'll know with the laser, you pretty much press E and then, you know, you drag your mouse through the target, pretty much. That's kind of how you do it. So the same thing with Rengar, when you're in the air, you can press E and then drag your mouse through them, and then that makes the bowler pretty much land on them when you actually get there. Uh, it's kind of difficult to do but it does take practice but trust me it's actually possible to do just remember the Victor Laser kind of idea or Rumble Ulti, whichever one you want and that's how you actually get it down. The second one is actually the one shot combo for Rengar. So this is pretty much all you need to remember for this is when you actually have your ulti on you need to have five stacks and then you press your Q first when you're actually coming close to the target so remember that so you actually have your Q on first so that means that your empowered Q is ready and then you do the victor laser idea as you jump with the bowler and then you pretty much just press every button to be honest. It doesn't really matter as long as like you hit the hydra and all this stuff then 
they pretty much die basically it pretty much just comes down to muscle memory being able to hit like all the all the actual active abilities at the exact right time uh, you pretty much just land everything on them at the exact same time it's pretty much the general gist of the one shot combo because all your abilities hit and then they just die because you know all the damage so I would highly recommend doing that one in custom games though, just play some bot games, uh, get super super fed, just get 40% CDR, and then just practice a one shot combo in bots and just you know jump on the bots over and over. Your, your ult is like a 30, 42 second cooldown anyway, so it doesn't take long, and you'll 100% get the combo down, and it's really really useful to be able to land that combo. And then finally is the triple Q. So this one is not actually that well known. It used to be a kind of big thing, and then Riot actually changed it, but you can actually still do it. So this one is sort of a lesser known one. So for this one, you need to make sure that you actually have five stacks. So you ult at five stacks, press your ferocity, so you're in power Q, and then what you want to do is press your E and W, so you need to land them as well, you need to make sure that you land them, and then pretty much just spam Q after that, and then because you landed the two abilities that gives you two stacks, you use the Q, you come out of your ulti, that gives you the three, then you land the other Q that you've done, that's four, and then by the time that's landed, you actually have another five stacks as well, and then you Q again, so it's basically a double frosted Q, and then in the middle of that, you actually have a regular Q, and that is the triple Q, so you do a lot, of, like a ton and ton of damage. So what you want to do with this one is you really want to use it like in a pretty much a real big burst trade. It's going to be super close. You can like instantly just one shot someone down like that. So there's a little tip. Uh, it's not really used that much since you really want to be you know running around and killing the ADC and stuff like that with it. But uh, it's just a little thing to note that you can actually and is possible to do as well. And finally, we are moving on to the section of the guide where I just pretty much add in the general further comments that I think are necessary for the guide. So, uh, one thing I want to mention is that with Rengar, you want to really be looking for picks as well. Uh, as with like team fighting with Rengar, is you can do it like lower uh, like in the lower MMR brackets, but higher on you will get focused as soon as you jump in, and people will start using pink wards and stuff like this. So, what you really want to be doing is looking for picks and split pushing. So, what you're pretty much looking for is an AD carry who's going to be by himself, and you can just pretty much get fed off them and like tilting them is a really big thing with Rengar as well like if the ADC puts in all chat like you know a oh, fucking Rengar noob or something like that like just keep killing him just constantly keep killing him keep killing him and you can win by him I I've won countless games like when I was in like a lower elo or I have played in lower elo on my smurf just by people like tilting against Rengar because you keep killing them and they're like oh fucking noob stop killing me noob champ and like zero count play you know stuff like this like really play on that stuff with Rengar because it can get you really really easy wins because he's that kind of real tilt inducing champion if you like if you get that fed off that person you just like one shot everyone and then their team's flaming them like stop split pushing against Rengar and you know stuff like this it's really really good so highly recommend like go for the tilt on Rengar and always go for that AD carry with flames and stuff like that it's really really useful. A thing as well on clearing with Rengar uh, pretty much you don't really ever want to be using your empowered W since your empowered Q now with the machete lifesteal pretty much heals you for more and also with the attack speed the camp dies faster as well so with Rengar what you really want to be thinking is like if something dies quicker you take less damage pretty much is the thing so the more damage you deal to it the faster it dies the less damage it deals to you because it's dead pretty much that's the idea so you don't really want to be using your empowered W because well, in clearing anyway, obviously if you are fighting someone you're really low, don't use your empowered Q if you're going to die. But obviously if you if you think about it logically as well, it makes sense. Like the jungle monsters are really predictable and also the empowered Q doesn't like, well, the empowered Q does give you the attack speed so it dies faster and stuff, but the empowered W doesn't. It's just that heal and your attack speed is normal. So that's just a thing to keep in mind that the increased attack speed and the extra damage burst from the frosty Q is really, really big. So remember that and that's just a little tip. Obviously if you are like literally... 1 HP, 1 auto off dying and you have your empowered uh, W, use that because you don't want to get executed, but that's just a little thing that I'd like to mention. And anyway guys, that's pretty much it anyway, this video has been reasonably long because I'm rambling about Rengar, I actually, again, would highly, highly recommend this champion, he's really, really fun to play, super good for climbing either though as well, you just, you can win so many games for people tilting against Rengar, or like, you're getting really annoyed with the team and stuff like that for not grouping against you, and you just instantly get, like, they're always dying and stuff like that, so, highly, highly recommend Rengar, yet again, really fun to play, super good to climb in Elo, and I hope this guide helped people, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.